You ready for the word? Okay. Man, I love to get the whole church together and have a something barbecue, a picnic, or something like that. Next Sunday, we all going over to a Crystal Martinez house. Martinez. We having a barbecue over her house, right? Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, put put God put God first. Hey, uh, so let me share the message. Now, when I say put God first, now I just did an offering and tithing an offering because it's it's right. But this is not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about in every aspect of our life, we got to begin to do this. How do we really expect the right blessings and the order of God to really begin to operate and flow in our life if we're actually living against what God teaches, right? We're not leading. We're not... Being the example, we're not doing what's right before God. I know the devil will have you deceived that, that there is another way that, than doing it than the way God wants. And that's where people waste years. They waste time. They waste money. They waste years because they figured out it's another way. There are some people that are so bad that they don't really even want to hear what God says because they already know, I want to do it my way. So they don't even really want to hear what God, but that's not you. Amen. That's not you. You want to hear what God says. So we're going to look at this example here. Um, and this is example is Elijah. Glory to God. And uh, so let me just start off by saying, oh, we are never going to walk in the fullness of God's blessings or intentions, intentions without putting God first. So we must be careful not to, one, deceive ourselves because we can do that. Because we can. That we are, in fact, deceiving ourselves that we're actually putting God first. So, some, so sometimes people think just showing up at the church that you're putting God first. But in your heart, you're not doing the things that God is teaching or God is giving instruction. You're not doing those. So that's what God, he's talking about your heart, your spirit putting me first. Yeah, your body will follow that when your heart is ready to obey God, right? We must take assessment and examine our doings. Only an unwise person will do the same thing over and over again without assessing or examining what they're doing, why they're doing it, and when something is wrong. Now, what's the definition of somebody doing something over and over and over again? My wife does it, she tells it well because she told me it one time. So what's the definition when a person is doing stuff that's damaging them or out of order, but they do it over and over and over again? What's the definition of that, baby? She says stupid. I must have did something one too many times that wasn't kind of right with her, and she reminded me of that definition. on wisdom is I want to know God's way I did a whole message series on knowing God's ways many people know God's laws don't do this do this don't do this that's not how God wants you to live he wants you to know his ways so that you can make wise decisions you're not a robot where you just don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. I can do this. I can't do this. That's laws. That's not for you. That's for a fallen man, a man that's been born of the spirit. You don't live by the laws. The laws are now inside of you. He says, I'll take my laws and I'll put my laws inside of you. You'll begin to live these things from the inside out. That's why you can look at some of these leaders and you say, what's the difference? They're living this life out from the inside out. They're letting God change their insides so that their outsides begin to follow what God is doing on the inside. Does that make sense? And so the, then it says that, so I must, you must take assessment. I'm not going to assess it for you. You know, as a pastor, God will allow me to point out certain things, right? But I'm not going to babysit you. I'm not coming behind you to make sure you're doing certain things. Hallelujah. 
So you must take assessment and examine our doings. And then, then adjust and readjust. So when you're not doing it, you adjust. And when you found out you slipped away from it, readjust until we conform that we might perform. Now, where's Kevin? Kevin might like that one right there. You hear what I just said? God wants you, us to conform that we might perform his will. If you don't conform to his way, you will not perform what God desires. So we conform that we might perform what is just, perfect, and right in God's eyes. We conform to God's word that we may perform God's word. Hallelujah. Carrying out his will and walking in his promised eternal blessings. Hallelujah. I don't know about you. I want to walk in God's eternal blessings. I want to go from glory to glory. I want to go from one level to another level in God. I don't want to remain the same. Hallelujah. You know, my wife blessed me the other day. She reminded me of something. Ten years ago, she had a performance appraisal done. And they said, where do you see yourself in ten years? Y'all had that kind of performance appraisal where they ask you, how do you see yourself? Yeah, where do you see yourself in ten years? And you say, well, in five years, I want to be the manager. Five years, I want to do this. In ten years, I want to be owning my own company and all that. She told them ten years ago, she said, I'm going to be traveling in the world with my husband taking the gospel around the world. Was that not prophetic? And we're doing that today. She told them in a business meeting. They thought she was going to give them this business work, you know, this. I'm going to be making 100000 And she said, I'm going to be traveling with my husband around the world, to the nations of the world, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. That was 10 years ago. Hallelujah. God found faithful. Hallelujah. So look at this, 1 Kings. 1 Kings. Come on. So let your vision be big. Hallelujah. And let it be beyond you, and don't let all of it be for you. Okay. Don't let your whole vision be for you. What part of that is for God? Woo, this is some good stuff. First Kings. Jesus. 17. And Elijah, the Tishbite, who was an inhabitant of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel live, before whom I stand, and I said this last week, uh, that's real important, because he had a knowledge that he stood in the presence of God. And I pray that many of you will begin to have that realization that you're not out there separate from God, that you actually stand and live in God's presence everywhere you go, everything that you're doing, you're yet in God's presence. This is why when you're on the football field or the business realm or in somebody's home, you're still in God's presence, right? Everywhere you go, he had this understanding there was a real awareness that Elijah had of him standing continually in God's presence. And when we truly realize, you and I, that we continually stand in God's presence, you are changed continually into his will. How do I know that? Because when you have an awareness that you're really in God's presence, there's certain things you won't do. And there's certain things you will do. When you know you're in God's presence, you're not trying to get away with something. You're not trying to hide and sneak and do things behind the scene and you think nobody sees you. When you it helps you. It helps your life when you have an awareness that you're always in God's presence. I love that, that he can say, I'm Elijah. I stand in the presence of God. Man, I love that. Gabriel said the same thing. Gabriel said, I'm the angel, I'm Gabriel, and I stand in the presence of God. That means you have something of God with you. 
So you're changed continually into his will, not just for protection. So some people want God's presence for protection. In other words, the scripture says, uh, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the way. People love that, right? Because that means that God is always with me to protect me. But they don't have the bigger picture, which means, no, he's not just there to protect you. You need to have an awareness of God standing in his presence that you are continually doing God's will. And you'll see here, Elijah had to follow God in the smallest things for him to even survive. So it's not just protection, but an awareness that God sees. Anybody know the name of God that means God sees? Say it again. El Rohe. In the Bible it says, this is how the children of Israel knew him. It said, and God sees. Capital S-E-E-S. God sees. Yes, God sees. Uh, who was it? Who was it? Um, God. Uh, Lord, uh, Isaac. Who, Isaac's. Uh, uh, Ishmael. Ishmael. Yes. She was cast away. Yeah. Hallelujah. She was cast away. The promise was with Isaac. He said, You got to get this boy away, and you got to get her, the mother away. The promise is with Isaac. And she's on her way going through the desert. She thinks she's going to die, and she thinks she's not going to survive. And the angel shows up and blesses her because she's still of Abraham. Look, and then she says, she serves the God perfect that sees. Nobody else saw me, but he saw me in the desert. He saw me when Abraham's eyes was not on me, when nobody's eyes was on me. He remembered me. God sees. God sees. See. So that's the awareness I have that whatever I'm doing, God sees, man. When I go to the restaurant this afternoon and take somebody to dinner or something, God sees. My conversation, God sees. I stand in God's presence. Hallelujah. And this helped, this helped Elijah. That awareness that God was always with him. You don't need anything external to keep you from sin. Self-government begins to kick in. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, the first form of government is self-government. And he says, and uh, so, be, but he had an awareness that God sees. A desire to please him in my walk. And in our walk. So God says to him, there shall not be dew. I mean, Elijah says, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. Now, I love this. Because he had this awareness of God and he walked with God, he was able to declare something this powerful. It will not rain except at my word. It won't rain until the next time I say so. Lord Jesus. So this is power of a man or woman that walks with God intimately. Hallelujah. That's why the devil likes to rob you and me of our intimate relationship with Jesus. He wants our relationship to be purely religious. Go to church. But don't, don't make his life real in yours. Don't really commit to serving him. Don't really do that. Just go to church. You did your portion. Did what you're supposed to do. Power of a man, a woman that walks with God intimately. So listen to this. When he said it won't rain, that was not God's word. That was Elijah's word. Now I love that. That was a man. Elijah had to declare that. We see it with Samuel also. But God says, I'll protect your words, and I won't let one, one part of your word fall to the ground. Samuel, if you declare something, if you say something, God says, I'm going to watch over your word, and I'm going to perform it. I love that. Can God trust your words? Will God watch over your words 
to perform them. I want it. So how powerful are your words? Be careful with your words. How powerful are your words? Here's another thing. Can you keep your word? That's the beginning. Can you keep your word? Because how can God watch over to protect it if I can't keep it? Hallelujah. Will you protect your word? That means once you say it, will you honestly protect it? To do all you can to bring it to pass. Because that's what God does. Hallelujah. He watched over Samuel's words. And here he's watching over Elijah's word. So protect your word. Glory to God. I just gave you two things. One, always remember that you stand in God's presence. Two, protect your word. So that you can be authentic. You're not a fake. You're not a counterfeit. Right? You're not just somebody that makes up something. Nobody can trust you. They can't bank on anything you say. And the word of the Lord came to him and saying, he said, get thee hence, turn eastward, and, and this is God telling Elijah, and hide yourself by the brook Kareth. That is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook. Now look what God does. He says, I commanded the ravens to feed thee there. Lord Jesus, if God can command an animal, do you think he can command somebody else to provide, somebody to bless you, somebody to give you the resources, somebody can, if he can, if he commands an animal, he commanded the raven to feed Elijah. So as you serve God as Elijah, God will take care of you in the same way. It did not matter that it was a raven. All creation knows God is sovereign and obeys his commands. That's why I'm going to serve God. If ravens can obey God to get his will done, right, this job was strictly to keep Elijah alive. That was the raven's job, just to keep this man of God alive, that he wouldn't die. Why? He was carrying God's word. So the raven had to bring him food in the day and food at night. That's how he was fed. Hallelujah. If ravens can obey God to get his will done, we can do that. Because obedience is an issue of the heart. It's not laws. It's the issue of the heart. It begins there. Hallelujah. That's why he says, if you don't have a heart for God, you're already in trouble. Obedience is the issue of the heart. Scripture. So he went and he did according to the word of the Lord. There it is. Obedience. So he went and he did according to the word of the Lord. You know, I'm not thinking about how many people would have struggled. Lord, I'm not eating no food from a raven. I'm not going to eat anything from a raven. You're going to you're gonna have to fix me something else. That's American Christianity. I'm too good to be fed by a raven. The Lord said, oh, okay. Starvation. Feed me by a raven, Lord. Whatever you think is best. Right? Said, go, and, and this favor is going to do this. So he went and he did according to the word of the Lord. Obedience. I put that in my notes. Obedience. For he went and he dwelt by the brook Kareth. Exactly what God told him to do. Now, that's how he had to follow God. This is what I want you to begin to see. We can't be general with God. You can, no way you can put God first and you remain general with God. You got to be attentive and you got to be focused. Right? Because if nobody else is hearing God, particularly if you have a family and you're a man, you got to hear God. You got to hear God. And if you're of a family and you're a mother and you have children, you got to hear God. It doesn't matter what these people wrestling with God's thoughts and intentions, you got to hear God. 
clearly. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. So two things. God told him to go to the brook first. That's for his liquid to drink, his thirst. And then he commanded a raven. Now look how God is taking care of his life. But what God is really doing is protecting his word. He's not just doing something for Elijah because he likes Elijah. Elijah had purpose and God's protecting his purpose. God is protecting purpose. Right? We want God to bless us with no purpose, no direction, nothing from God. I, I don't want to obey God. God got to prove this to me. God, no, God don't have to prove nothing to you. He's keeping you alive. Your money is coming from him, your health. He doesn't prove anything. Nothing more God has to prove. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It was obedience to God that got Elijah fed. You got to see that. If he didn't obey God and go to the brook, he would have died of thirst because there was famine in the land. If he didn't wait on that raven every day, he would have died. Famine in the land. Hallelujah. Let me say this. It just came to me. When you're dealing with God, it can't be your way. Because Elijah would have picked a different way of doing this. But he had to obey God. And then, so it came to pass after a while... Oh, it was obedience to God that got Elijah fed in the famine and in the drought. So you think God can't take care of you in famine and in drought? Stuff happening all around you, Bill, I can't pay this, this, car, this, and all these kind of things happening. You think God can't take care of you? Come on, use that now to turn things around and put your, you know, your fist down and say, guess what? You know what? We're putting God first in this family. All that stuff is happening. I'm not going to wait for all that to get fixed. Because I can tell you this, it's not all going to get fixed. You got to obey God in the midst. You got to obey God when he's first speaking to you. Because he's not going to fix it all, and then he expects you to obey him. If you're not obeying him in all of that, he knows you're not going to obey him when it all gets fixed. Because you're still serving yourself. Somebody say Amen. Hallelujah. So I got a question. It says, so it came to pass after a while, the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Anybody ever been there? That you're obeying God and it seems like stuff dried up. I'm doing what God said, but it looks like it's dried up. What do you do then? You keep obeying God. You continue to obey God because that's the place where people give up and say, I'm going to do it my way. He doesn't do it here. I just gave you a great nugget because you will hit a place at some point where you say, it's not going well and I've been trying to do this. Oh, this is some good stuff. I discovered with God, you cannot try. Now, when it comes to try me, he says, try me. That's the only place he says that. Test me. Everything else, you got to obey God. You, you, you can't do this trying thing. You got to surrender. You got to obey. That's when you say that, God, you're wiser than me. You're, you're, you have all wisdom, all knowledge. You're sovereign. That's when you say, God, whatever you want, that's what I want to do. Can you imagine how smart you are, but... Is your mind hindering you from obeying God because you think you have to figure this thing out. It has to make good sense in your mind for you to do something. Now, you're following a God that created the heavens and the earth. But you can't trust him to take care of whatever you're dealing with. It's amazing. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I found out God is about order. I said, put God first. Keep watching this. Put God first. Put God first. Then he says, I said, what happens when it dries up? 
continue to obey God. Why do I say that? Look at the next sentence. And the word of the Lord came to him right at the time when it dried up. The word came to him and said, Arise, get thee to Seraphat, which belongeth to Zadon, and, and dwell there. Behold, I commanded a widow woman there to sustain me. So now God has something else in place. And again, he commands somebody to sustain Elijah. First it was a raven, now it was a woman, a widow woman. Of all the people he could have selected, why this widow woman? I've commanded her already to sustain you. She doesn't even know. Hallelujah. You following me? And the word of the Lord came to him saying, arise. Then he says, behold, so God commands people and things to take care of you that you know not of. You know there's somebody waiting for your obedience. They can't even release a blessing to you. They can't. It's just like a father has a son and he wants to give him a blessing and sometimes he holds back in giving that blessing. Because if I give it to him right now, the father already knows He's going to burn through that thing that I've worked all my life for because he's not mature enough. But he waits for the right time. He says, son, I've been, I've been keeping this for some time now. This is yours. Anybody listening? That's the father. So here he is. He, he arrives. Somebody say obedience. Yeah. He leaves the brook. He leaves that place. Now he's going to find a woman. Obedience. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there <coughs> gathering of sticks, and he called to her, <coughs> excuse me, and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, look, he stops her. And he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. And she said, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not cake, but a handful of meal and a barrel and a little oil and a cruise. And behold, I'm gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat and die. So that's her future until she encounters the man of God. That was her destiny. She had nothing left. The sticks was just for the fire. She had enough meal just to feed. See, and that's how many of us sitting here, you think you have just enough to take care of your bills. That you cannot see the bigger thing that God wants to do. And you keep living that same way. So here, look. Look what Elijah, what a mean thing to say. This, what a mean thing to say. I don't have very much, and this is what Elijah says to her. Hmm. Elijah said to her, fear not. Go and do what thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first. And bring it to me. Now that makes no sense. He's not compassionate. He, he's, he just wants it all for himself. I just said we're going to die. Now he wants to eat it all. That's all natural thinking. That's just like a man of God at, at telling you how to tithe. And, and oh, he just wants it. That's, how, that's just the same thing. The wrong thinking. No. You follow this all the way out. Without that encounter of that man in God, you see what happens for her. So look what their future was without the man of God entering into their lives. They would have died. That was her destiny before the contact with that man of God. Her and her son were about to die, and she did not know God was present with the presence of Elijah. 
she didn't, was not aware that God was present at the presence of Elijah. Jesus. Elijah said, fear not. You go and do whatever you said, but you first give it to me. I'm not saying this to you. This is what, this is the point I'm making. Elijah represented God in this. Would you agree? So what he's saying is put God first, then eat. That's what he's saying. Elijah... (laughs) God taking care of Elijah. He's doing something for this woman. He's going to take it. Yeah, he's doing something for the woman. He said, look, this, I'm going to put it in the proper order. Don't you go and eat for yourself. You got enough barely to live. You come and give it to me first. Give it to God first and you watch what happens with the rest. So put God first. Put him first in everything you do. I'm not just talking about money. You honor God with your first, not with your leftovers. Hallelujah, this is good. Go back and listen to it later. You know, when you start looking at scripture, it's amazing how God, when you give something to God, he always asks for your first. Why? He always asks for your first. When you have a harvest, he said, bring the first fruit to me. Why? Give me the first fruit of your harvest. Now, you're already tithing. Give me the first fruit of your harvest. Why? He asked for the firstborn in the family, male. Give me the firstborn. Dedicate that to God. Why? In the tithes, he asked for the first, 10% to him. First. You know why? You can only honor God with first. If it's second, something else has been honored. If if it's down here, something else has been honored greater than God. You honor God only with first. Hallelujah. 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 Look what happened to the lady, and I'll wrap it up. Because if I don't, I got six more hours in me. And that's only for the chosen. Okay, there's one. She said, hey. Hey, look. Look, look, look. Look what happens to her now. He says, you go and honor. You give it to me first and bring it to me. And after that, you make it for thee and for your son. So he says, after you take care of me, then you take care of you and your needs. I'll save the other scripture I'm going to go to till later, but let me give you one or two more. I'll come back to that. Can I do a part two? So look at verse 14. He says, for thus saith the Lord God of Israel. So here's the promise When you put God first, this was her promise. Look at this. The barrel. He said, you give it to me first. The barrel of meal shall not waste. And I told you, when you give to God first, your tithe, what God does is eliminate your waste. You just look at how much you're wasting. If you take assessment of how much money comes in, assess how much is wasted. Many of us can be, we can double (laughs) how we live just by eliminating waste. God says, you put me first, I'll eliminate the waste. When you get blessed with something, I'm going to cause the harvest to be plenteous. You can't do that. I can't do that. The barrel of meal shall not waste. So the first blessing is you eliminate waste. Neither shall the cruise of oil fail, which means your flow or your prosperity or your blessings shall never cease. 
Whew. Until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. So, you will be provided for in drought and in famine. Hallelujah. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. First, it was Elijah's obedience to God. Now, look what happened. Now, she is being blessed by her obedience. First, it was Elijah's obedience. Now, she's being blessed by her obedience. Something was transferred. Something, by the presence of the man of God, something was given to her. She could have died and tried to save what she thought she had, or she could have given it to God first. And here's the promise. First it was Elijah's obedience, then it was hers. Elijah's obedience produced obedience in her. And she and he and her house did eat many days. So she ate, he ate, and then the whole house ate many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. Is that some good stuff? What a great example of giving God first. I will make sure that your cruise of oil will never run out. Your meal will last. What this woman didn't know that even after this was over, her son dies. And had it not been for the relationship of Elijah, if she'd never met him, if she never obeyed what he said, she disobeyed God. What wind up happening, not long after the boy dies, guess who she calls? She calls the man of God, Elijah, and says, can you come? And this is where you see Elijah lays prostrate upon the boy and prays. He prays. Nothing happens. He gets up, does it again. Nothing. Third time, the boy wakes up. He brings and gives him to him. What if that obedience never developed? She didn't know God was not just feeding them for a period of time. He was here to bring life to her son, to restore her son. He could, they could not see the bigger picture. Somebody say glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, give Jesus praise. Put God first. Begin today in everything you do. In everything you do, begin to do it today. Hallelujah. This is the opportunity. The day that you hear my voice, the Bible says, harden not your heart. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Y'all ready for communion? We're going to end with communion today. Come on. Let me see your hands. How many were blessed? Come on, that's great. We're going all the way. I'm not playing around with this. We're going all the way. And I, we need people in our ministry that's, that's committed and making up their mind. We're going all the way too. We're called to be a part of this. We're called to help bring the vision to pass. We know that you're not playing around, right? I can assure you of this. If what I'm, we're teaching you your, your marriage will, will improve. Can I, and let me see some hands of some people in here since you've come. Your marriage will improve. You will get things in order, right? You'll begin to see progress in your own personal life, but not if you don't, if you don't obey. Now, if you don't obey, you're going to go and do, you hear the message, you're still going to go do what you want, you're still going to get the same results. Hallelujah. So this table right here, thank you, Pastor. This table is for believers, right? This is, this is not for the world. This is for believers, right? 
I want you to understand that. So this is just not everybody 